everyone, it's Elise and welcome back. This time I will take you to Salzburg, which quickly became one of my favorite cities. We traveled by train and reached the city in only two and a half hours. We stayed at Hotel Stein and they were so kind and gave us an upgrade because it was my birthday that day. We stayed in a room with a view over the old city and the river Salzach. We had three wonderful sunny March days ahead of us. I'm wearing my purple swan dress today but without petticoat because I dislike traveling with it. This is the most famous street in Salzburg, the Treidegasse. It was first mentioned in 1150 as it was an important trading route. Nowadays it's a pedestrian zone and shopping street. It is lined with major international brands like Gucci or Prada and small, also touristy shops in between. I love the art on the front of the houses. We often tell stories and the small details like saint statues and intricate hanging signs. We stopped at Café Tomaselli, the oldest café in Austria, and the raspberry cake was the best I ever had. Time for some history. Salzburg was first settled by Celts, but later on belonged to the Roman Empire under the name Iuavum. It was abandoned in 488 and founded nearly by the missionary St. Rupert in 696. The construction of the fortress began in 1077 and gradually expanded in three phases over the following centuries. Its main source of income was salt, as the name indicates with salz being the German word for salt and burg for castle. The city was independent in the 14th century and became the Prince Archbishopric of Salzburg, an ecclesiastical principality. It was neutral during the Thirty Years' War and magnificent buildings were erected in the 17th and 18th century by Italian builders. Salzburg only became part of Austria in 1816 after the Wiener Congress and has been Austrian ever since. It is most famous for the composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and the movie The Sound of Music. Although the movie is only famous in the English-speaking world and most Austrians have not heard of it. This here is the Domquartier. The Prince Archbishop ruled and lived in this residence from 1120 to 1803. It is stated on their official homepage that, and I quote, the prince, archbishop's absolutist rule, claimed control over both heavenly and earthly matters. The building complex consisting of residence and cathedral was the outward expression of this universal spiritual and secular power." End of quote. Since 2014, it is a museum. It took us through 15 staterooms, a gallery with a collection of 16th to 19th century European paintings, a terrace connecting both buildings, and the balcony of the Salzburger Dome. I bought a few items that day, happy birthday to me! And for my birthday dinner, I got pickled salmon, calamari with sweet potatoes and for dessert the most wonderful creme brulee. Did you hear the crust? The next day I wore my angel dress. Uh, unintentional foreshadowing. We took the railway up to the Fortress Hall in Salzburg because I was too lazy to walk up the hill. We were so lucky and got to stand right at the end of the train and enjoy this wonderful view up the hill. Riding up Salzburg really reminded me of Rome or an Italian city. Fortress Hohen Salzburg is one of the largest medieval castles in Europe and the place is really huge. Not all places are open up for the public, but we spent around 5 hours up there. We went up to the panorama view through the narrow stone corridors and I just felt so constricted and uneasy. Glad I'm not claustrophobic. Up on the platform we had a 360 degree view over the mountains and that was breathtaking. I can't remember the names of all the mountains anymore and Google Maps was not helpful so I could only name two mountains. <laughs> Next was the prince's chambers, with the golden hall, the golden chamber and the royal apartments. Here the ceiling tries to imitate a starry night sky. I'm listening to the information provided and I look like a hobbit. The furnishing of these rooms have remained unchanged since 1501. And this is the golden chamber and it may have served as a reception area. The armory was originally one of the four storages for the fortress cannons and guns. Lunchtime with strawberry dumplings. Back in the city we went to St. Peter's Cemetery, which was founded in the 7th century, and St. Margaret's Chapel, which was built in 1485 in Gothic architecture style. 
And here, these are all tombs. Nanal, the sister of Mozart and Michael Haydn, also buried in this cemetery. Up here where the people stand and all the way to the left side are the catacombs. The name is misleading because it was actually a hermitage built by early Christians and served as a meeting place and not a place where they buried their dead. This was the Getraudenkapelle and it's still used today to celebrate mass. I'm not going to lie, I was so creeped out by the place. Going up and down the stairs was so scary because it was dim and the stone steps were rough and uneven. No idea how I made it without tripping. We made a short stop over at Shop Fürst. Paul Fürst was the inventor of the Salzburger Mozartkugel and we bought some for ourselves. The Franciscan church was built in the 13th century and given to the Franciscans in 1592. The altar from 1709 first only showed Maria. Baby Jesus was added about 90 years later. And I could not find out whose head this was. The next church we visited was Collegium Kirche, built in 1707. At first I thought the church was newly renovated and everything was covered in white, but it was really designed and built like that, and also renovated in 2013. We walked back to the hotel next to the river Seitzach and crossed the bridge Markatsteg. I think every major city has a lover's bridge like that already. I've seen similar in a few other cities. The sunset was so beautiful and we wanted to prep dinner, but all the restaurants were booked out. Yes, all of them. Austria had lifted all of its code restrictions and everybody could dine out again. Without options, we just grabbed a kebab and a soft drink at an Ebinau hotel room while watching telly. That was a great way to end the day too. On our last day, we went to Rosen Cafe for brunch and the food was so good. It was homemade and they had a lot of vegan options. Afterwards, we went to Schloss Mirabel Park as the building is not open to public. It has a very spicy history because it was built in 1606 for the mistress of the Prince Archbishop. Nowadays, it is used as the mayor's office and it's also a very popular wedding place. And here are the stairs where Maria and the children from Trap danced in the movie The Sound of Music. We strolled around the beautiful gardens and everywhere the signs of spring showed. My outfit of the day pictures were made here and I'm wearing my Marie skirt today. And I'll probably never stop goofing around. And goodbye Salzburg, thank you for your hospitality and see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and leave a like. Also support me on Patreon starting from just 1 euro a month. See you soon. Bye.